So today I want to show you these original lab research papers about a topic that's well known to scientists because of our poor soil nutrition and because of our poor food pyramid model and that is magnesium deficiency. And I also want to add some things that are not so well known. Now way back when I was married, I had a strange health problem. I'd be relaxing or working, whatever, and my heart would beat irregular. It would start palpitating, and this would cause adrenaline to surge. I would start sweating. I would get nervous. I thought I would have a heart attack, something, and then it would beat really strong once and stop and then start back and go normal. And this happened a few times a week, maybe, for a few months, and I finally went in to see a doctor and another doctor. And another doctor. I went all around Boston, saw some of the best doctors. They actually captured this, e th this heart palpitation on the ECG machine, did a number of tests, and found nothing. They had no idea what was going on. I started doing my own research, and I'll tell you what I found. So it starts with this paper, which was presented at the International Symposium on Magnesium in 1986. The title is Magnesium Content of the Food Supply in the Modern Day World. So they basically say, yeah, the USDA conducted a nationwide food consumption survey and found 75% of individuals did not meet the recommended daily allowance criterion. 75% of people. So that's a huge problem. It's only gotten worse. And what happens when you're not having enough magnesium? Well. This paper, this review article in Clinical Biochemistry, published in 2003, titled Magnesium Metabolism and Its Disorders, starts by saying magnesium, over 300 enzymes are dependent on magnesium. Over 300, that's all sorts of machinery throughout your body. And what happens with magnesium deficiency? Chronic low magnesium state has been associated with a number of chronic diseases, the type that are on the rise all around America, including diabetes, hypertension, coronary heart disease, uh, asthma, it goes on. In, a lot of these are related to inflammation, and that's the next thing I wanna focus in on, is how is magnesium related to inflammation? How is it causing these chronic diseases when you're suboptimal or deficient in magnesium? Well, let's move up to 2014. This journal is called Current Opinions in Clinical Nutrition and Metabolic Care. And the title is Effects of Magnesium Depletion on Inflammation in Chronic Disease. Again, 2014. So what are these guys saying? Just really briefly, they say deficient magnesium, the type that we have in our country all over, has been associated with elevated C-reactive protein. C-reactive protein goes up. What is C-reactive protein? a widely used indicator of inflammation. If you go to the doctor and you have arthritis or some chronic disease or just low energy, hopefully they test for C-reactive protein status. And if you're low on magnesium, that causes elevated C-reactive protein. That's a problem. This is indicative of chronic low-grade inflammation. That's what this says. Moving on. Also 2014, journal called Experimental Biology and Medicine, titled Effects of Magnesium Deficiency, more than skin deep. What's this paper say? It says addition of magnesium causes increased inflammatory mediators such as TNF alpha and NF kappa beta. They're down regulated. All right, so you put in magnesium and tumor necrosis factor and nuclear factor kappa beta, TNF alpha and NF kappa beta are down regulated. There's less of them. These are inflammatory proteins. This is showing specifically how magnesium is involved with the inflammation process. Um, it, it goes on, dysregulation of these, TNF-alpha, NF-kappa-beta, and other inflammatory medi mediators has been linked to several inflammatory disorders, including asthma, arthritis, atherosclerosis, and neuroinflammation. You see, these are the same types of problems that we just looked at from magnesium deficiency. And you have to remember, folks, that if you have a cut, and you have a little bit of inflammation there, that's a good thing. That's clearing dead cells. It's eliminating virus-eating bacteria. That inflammation heals you. 
But if you've got systemic inflammation, these inflammatory proteins, TNF-alpha, NF-kappa-beta, interferon, interleukin, C-reactive protein, you've got these going throughout your whole body, you're going to have chronic disease of some kind eventually. Diabetes, arthritis, etc. Let's move on. Final paper, this time 2015, and it's published by the American College of Sports Medicine. The title of this paper is Magnesium and the Athlete. And it says magnesium helps maintain muscle function. Of course, they're going to focus on muscles. This is about athletes. Heart rhythm, blood pressure, immune system. Same reflects the, the other paper we'd looked at. Blood glucose levels. And it st- has been studied as an aid for athletes. Magnesium has been studied as an aid for athletes. Later in the paper, they talk about how athletes sweat more, so they lose more magnesium through their sweat. But why I wanted to bring this paper in is because they say the most common method used to assess magnesium status is via serum magnesium. You go to the doctor and you say, yeah, I want to check my my magnesium status. Serum magnesium, most common method. However, this is the least sensitive marker of magnesium status. In other words, it's not good. The best marker for magnesium status, they say, is the magnesium loading test. Okay, so if you go in and you want to get your magnesium checked, this is the best way to do it. How do, what, what is the magnesium loading test? Well, they infuse you with magnesium and then you collect your pee for 24 hours and it says, if 80% or more of magnesium is retained in the body, the person is considered magnesium deficient. In other words, if your body is starving for magnesium, and you infuse your body with magnesium, your cells are gonna take it up. Your body's gonna use it. It's gonna grab onto it. And we'll talk about another problem with magnesium deficiency in the next episode, but if you've got plenty of magnesium, then you end up peeing out that magnesium that they infuse. So it's a huge problem. I recommend people supplement magnesium, almost everybody, And unless you're eating a ton of spinach or something like that, you should really supplement magnesium. And we'll talk about other problems in the next episode.